So in this lecture, we'll be looking at the concept of how changing the price of a substitute good can affect the market for another. So firstly, let's look at the definition of a substitute good. Uh, a substitute good is a similar good which can be consumed so that the same level of material satisfaction can be obtained. So obviously, because the study of economics um, focuses around maximizing our, um, our living standards, we want to consume a good that both consumes or satisfies our living standards and at the same time is low cost. So that means if there are substitute goods, we will offer the low cost alternative, which will minimize our opportunity cost. So the most obvious example that I can think of at the moment is the market for peanut butter and the market for the Nutella. Peanut butter and Nutella. So in the, in the morning for breakfast on toast, I don't really mind if I put peanut butter on my toast or Nutella on my toast because I derive the same amount of material satisfaction for either. So if I were to say peanut butter would have cost $5 and Nutella would have cost $4, I would offer Nutella because it is lower in cost and because I derive the same amount of material satisfaction from Nutella, that's why I would buy Nutella at the lower price. So let's look at how this would actually affect supply and demand analysis. Okay, so let's look at the supply and demand curves of the peanut butter. We assume that the peanut butter has a relatively um, upward sloping, relatively elastic demand curve or supply curve because it has a lot of substitutes and it has an elastic demand curve at P1. So before any changes in price, we can see that there has been an equilibrium well, the market is, has reached an equilibrium at P1 and at Q1. So assuming for whatever reason, the price of peanut butter would increase to P2. And as you can see, that the quantity demanded at P2 would have decreased to Q1. And assuming that the demand and supply curve for Nutella are similar, to peanut butter, so the supply curve is upward sloping, the demand curve is down sloping, and we also have a corresponding equilibrium at P1 and P2. Okay, so now, now we can see that because the price of peanut butter has increased to P2, it is more expensive than P1 from Nutella. So people opt to buy more Nutella now. So we can see that at every price level, the quantity of Nutella would have increased in demand. So the demand curve will shift to the right. So the demand curve shifts to the right to D. So initially, before any change in supply, we will see that because the demand curve has shifted to the right, there will now be, there should be a Q, the, the demand for Natal would be at Q2 here. And so here, because the original equilibrium point was here, and the quantity demanded was at Q1, and the new quantity demanded is at Q2, we can see that there is a shortage in supply, because supply is at here, Q1, and demand is at Q2, so there is a shortage. So what happens is that producers will recognize this shortage and slowly increase supply, so the supply would experience an expansion. And once they reach this new equilibrium point, they will stop. So there's a new equilibrium at P2. And this corresponds to a new quantity equilibrium at QE, for example. So what happens is because the price has increased, therefore there will be a contraction in the demand curve here. And now they have reached a new equilibrium at E2. Buyers are happy, suppliers are happy once again. So as we can see, as a as the price of a substitute good increases from P1 to P2, the demand curve of the other substitute good will shift to the right, from D1 to D2. And the converse also holds true. So let's look at the condition or the situation where uh, peanut butter actually decreases in price. So instead of increasing, we have a decrease in the price of a substitute good. Okay. So performing the same demand supply analysis, we have 
quantity as the x and price as the y. Upward sloping supply curve, downward sloping demand curve, and an equilibrium quantity as determined by the free market before any changes of P1 and Q1 and equilibrium one here. So let's see what happens if the price were to decrease from P1 to P2. So a can of peanut butter is now cheaper. The demand, as we shall see, would have increased to Q2. So what happens to the market for Nutella? So we have quantity, price, upward sloping supply, downward sloping demand, and now a corresponding price. So this is the initial market condition. We have a equilibrium quantity. So everyone's happy here. And we have an equilibrium at E1. So the buyers are buying everything, the suppliers are supplying. So everybody's happy at this point. But now we can see that because peanut butter has decreased in price, and because we assume that peanut butter is a perfect substitute for Nutella, people would opt to purchase peanut butter as opposed to Nutella, because there's no point in spending, say, the extra dollar, because you're still going to derive the same amount of material satisfaction from eating peanut butter for breakfast as you are from Nutella. But what happens here is the demand curve will shift from D1 to D2, and this is a shift to the left as pointed by the arrow here. And now what happens is that here at this new point, we would experience a new equilibrium. So the, the price, the equilibrium price of Nutella will go down as well as the equilibrium quantity traded. So Q1 down to Q2 and P1 down to P2. And so now the new equilibrium here is at E2. So now, as you can see, because initially the price of the peanut butter has decreased from P1 to P2, and because peanut butter is a perfect substitute for Nutella, the demand for Nutella at every level of quantity would go down, and therefore the equilibrium price and the equilibrium quantity traded for Nutella would also go down. As producers recognise this surplus in production, the so production is here, where demand is only here, they will start to lower prices so they can get rid of all their excess inventory. And so, as there is a contraction in supply, and as price decreases, demanders or consumers will respond to that by expanding their demand. And so the new equilibrium point at E2 will be reached. And so this is how the minus of high analysis can be applied to how changes in a price of a substitute group can affect certain markets.